impressive when you hit these half of backs, getting 26 runs in the game. Uh, what did you see from those two guys in particular? Yeah, they came out, swung the bats really good. They they really laid off some close pitches there in the first inning. Um, you know, all those guys probably went to a full count and Carter, Noisy, and Braxton and set the thing up, and then Jace got a pitch to hit and hit it out. And then they kind of kept it going. You know, we had to switch pitchers. And then Peter, because of those good at-bats, was had a pitch count in an inning where we needed to get him out of there. Um so, um, impressive day for the red team. Um, it really, it's all set up by putting good at bats together and laying off, being able to separate balls and strikes. Pretty fun to watch. Trevor, on the pitching staff today, what are you hoping to take out of the, the again this day? Um, really the ability to execute. I mean, really all you can do is you can't control the outcome of what's going to happen when a guy swings, but. Um, the ability to execute pitches is what you do control. And we probably had a few guys when something bad happened, they probably let it carry over to the next pitch. And ability to move on is what you need. Um, uh, you're not going to be perfect when you pitch. Um, and so really it's uh, the mental side of it as much as anything. Any news you can put out, I guess, you know, I know they're shorting because of the weather and whatever other issues. I mean, yeah. was it like the sun was kind of hitting them? Yeah, yeah, I mean, really, it was um, fall, and then it felt like the guys really practiced with, with pretty good intent throughout the fall, if you just said the whole group. Um, you, you're probably never going to get all all of them to, you know, to practice the way you want them to practice. Uh, but for the most part, um, through, the, through the 45 days and the 35 practices that you have, uh, the guys did a good job of, you know, of having a purpose each day and, and coming out working on some stuff. When did uh, the freshman come in that really stood out in the fall so far? Um, yeah, I would say um, Jace had a pretty good fall. You know, he definitely, you guys saw some of that today. He has some power. Um, and we saw glimpses of that. Um, Dylan Carter really has the ability to separate balls and strikes, has the ability to defend. Um, and, um, you know, we haven't seen a few of them. Um, Steven Vasquez through today, I mean, he hadn't thrown a lot. That was his third outing of the fall. Threw the ball really well throughout the fall. Um, you know, Cushing played really well. Um, you know, he went down to Frisco. I think he played day one. Had some really good at-bats, played good defense. Um, you know, Nate Rombacks had really good presence at the plate. Um, Hadn't had a lot to show for it, but he's separating balls and strikes really well, and uh, probably leaving some guys out there. I mean, it, it's um, you know, there's some older freshmen in Cal Connolly. Um, you know, he's he's I mean, he's held his own out there. Um, I think Cushing will give him a run for his money when it's all said and done. I think both those guys bring a lot to the table, and so. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I mean, it, I mean, we shut Divine down. We shut eight guys down about a week ago on the mound. Just felt like we'd seen enough out of them. And Andrew Divine was one of those guys, freshman, right-hander. I mean, it really, honestly, in Frisco, I'd seen enough. I mean, it was like, okay, like let's get to the spring with this guy. We're, he's going to compete. He's going to command two pitches, and he's got above-average stuff. And so. Um, so that's probably that probably wraps it up as far as the freshmen go. You know, you guys spent a little time uh, together at Mahone High School after the fall. What, what are your thoughts of you know, having Cam here and Dylan over there over the top? Yeah, I really like the way Dylan uh, moves around over at third. Um, you know, seems like uh, Stillwell and TJ both really battled over there at first throughout the whole fall, and about the time you think one guy is going to show up every day, the other guy has a great day. They both have, you know, good attributes uh, about them playing defense. And um, Cole had a really good fall offensively. I think our team would probably call me crazy if he wasn't, you know, sitting somewhere in the lineup. And because uh, he's got some presence, he 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 has some intent to do some damage when he goes to the plate, which is good. Um, again, shortstops are position. You know, it's uh, you got Cal and Cushing there. Um, 
you know, Jace played third base really well at times. Um, probably liked the way Dylan, you know, defended the bunt a little better. Um, I, it, it's, uh, but at the same time, just to answer the question in general, uh, we thought we knew things at this point and made decisions what we thought, and the exact opposite happens. Um, thing I've learned over the years is, is a fall, it can show you some things, but it's not going to define anybody who they are. Um, I think as far back as 1999, I had a guy hit about a buck 80 in the fall. He ended up hitting 22 home runs and hit nearly 400 um, and hitting the four hole. So as a freshman, you know, sometimes they just don't bounce back as fast. Um, they let one, one at back carry over to the next. And in the fall, I mean, that can show. Um, it can, I mean, obviously you won't have a lot of numbers if you do that. So uh, the ability to show up every day and prepare the right way is really what you're hunting out, out of guys. What's next for you guys? I know I've got classes and everything else, but with regards to what you guys can do with the winter party. Yeah, we're, we're scheduled to go through Wednesday. We just told them, I mean, generally Monday's a day that we're required to take off. We have to pick a day. Um, Playing weather, man, Monday and Tuesday is supposed to be bad. Cold, Wednesday is supposed to be nice. If it's nice, we'll put ourselves in some situations on Wednesday, um, offensively and defensively, and just try to, you know, stay ahead of things. Um, let some guys see some pitches. Um, and so we'll utilize all the days that we can. And then after that, you're talking about um, guys are staying in the weight room. Um, probably have some individual days at some point in there. Uh, I had to look at it. Actually, I don't think we do between now and Thanksgiving. Um, and so it'll be a lot of work on their own. Um, and that's really a result of we're, about two years ago, we were required to take 14 additional off days by the NCAA. And so what we try to do is, is get a bunch of them between now and Christmas because Basically, what you're looking at is once Thanksgiving break comes, you got a week after that where it's a dead week, and then you have finals. And so um, the college semester ends a little sooner than it did uh, 10 years ago. And so you're not really getting a lot of skill work done as with coaches, if that makes sense. Looking at the current draw, number 17 by Chris Nolan, what have you seen from him in terms of what he's been able to do? Tell you what, I mean, he's uh, last two times out, he's as good as I've seen him. And guys made some awful big pitches for us in three years. He not only kind of came back, he came back. I mean, he's back, and you know, he's uh, he's a driven young man. He's a guy that's, um, um, and I think we mentioned this last year. It takes a lot of confidence to come back to school or to go to school when you're in that position, and. Um, what he showed us more than anything is a guy that whatever he sets out to do, he's going to be successful. I mean, it's just there's a lot of guys that are scared. It'll be the last time that they get an opportunity to do that. Um, you're talking about a guy that whatever he sets sets his mind to do, he's going to do it. As far as on the field, um, got a lot of a lot of confidence in what John can go do. He commanded the fastball really good. I, mean, I don't know how many people got a guy that can sit there 94 to 98 and Throw a secondary pitch for a strike and a change up, and uh, he's going to be fun to watch. Leadership wise, you lost a, a great big one in Josh Young last year. What have you seen from Josh? Have you seen him really step up and kind of take charge of the locker room a bit side? I'd say Cam Warren, you could throw in that mix. I'd also say Gabe Holtz, you could throw in that mix. Caleb Killian, you could throw in that mix. It was more than just one. We, we lost some really good players and some really good leaders. Um, we've got a mix of guys in there um, that'll lead by example and um, lead as we go in. I don't think right now you ever know exactly who that's going to be. Um, when things are all rosy, usually it's pretty easy to lead. Uh, you have, you know, you have some setbacks. It's a little bit different story. And the neat thing about those guys that I just mentioned is they led by they. All those guys had intent each day for pairing. And so guys see that every day, and they know that um, they have an idea what it looks like to get ready to play. 
and uh, baseball can be can be a tough game at times but the guys that can again do what it takes to prepare each day are usually the ones that have some success um braxton made the lineup out for the red team so you could probably say he's the front runner he put himself in the three hole and he's catching played right field i mean every time he throws a baseball everybody's like wow the guy's got a cannon so He's definitely a guy that you could, uh, if you wanted to point one guy out, generally in a 70-game season, you need more than one. I mean, you, you, need, you need 15 to 22 guys that, that want to play baseball every day for sure. With you being your authority, because we're talking about your time in the Red Team, how has that helped with your growth and your production? Yeah, we, we mentioned over there um, – to them yesterday and the night before at that deal that that comes up quite a bit. You know, we've got two guys on staff here that played for me there and that coach with us now. And, um, you know, it was special. I mean, you get to see your name rolled out there on the fence. It's pretty cool. Um, the thing I thought about probably the most is, is um, I was there when Danny Darwin's number got retired and was there when John Lackey's got retired. And those guys were players and were great players in their own right. And, uh, but mine represents a little more, if you ask me. It represents all the guys that rolled through there and that built that program. And, uh, and I didn't do much other than write the lineup out. I mean, it's just pretty cool that you can put your name on the wall and it represents nine years of guys that you know played baseball there because without them, I wouldn't be up there.